Edinburgh, Scotland, a very ancient land with a castle built upon an extinct volcano. Many mysterious things lay and possibly live within Scotland, the most famous of which undoubtedly the extremely elusive Loch Ness Monster. However, recent surveys would suggest that among the most popular of attractions are in fact its vast collection of, to the well-trained eye, extremely ancient coves and cave systems. Hand-cut, these caverns will demonstrate the immense skill, determination, and of course ingenuity of our distant ancestors, revealing to all those who are lucky enough to visit them just what these ancient people were capable of. And hidden behind a modest door on Drum Street in Gilmerton is quite possibly the most incredible network of them all – underground passageways, large, perfectly carved chambers, benches, tables, and even a small chapel all painstakingly hewn from solid stone by hand. And thankfully, due to their popular attraction with tourists, often the explorers amongst us, many open-minded individuals, have often been left with a sense of discomposure regarding the officially upheld explanation for their origins. As such, and rather predictably, many alternative theories, often involving a far more ancient origin for the cove and its purpose now abound. The mass regurgitated view regarding the construction would suggest that a blacksmith by the name of George Patterson, who actually resided within the cove within the 18th century, somehow created them alone, by hand, and within a mere five-year period, with even George himself claiming to have cut this extensive, elaborate, and unquestionably enigmatic underground structure using simple hand tools. Since the claims three centuries ago, however, Numerous holes have been seemingly discovered within this popularly upheld sequence of events, fueling the already prevalent suspicions within skeptic parties, maybe in an attempt to hide its true antiquity, as we experience so often during our research. On Wednesday, the 15th of August, 1906, a front-page column by a writer known as F. R. Coles for The Scotsman dug into George Patterson's version of events, commonly referred to as the tradition. Coles found it to have been nothing but a fictional fallacy, possibly created by George himself in an attempt to profit from deception. It seems Patterson not only accomplished the seemingly impossible, excavating hundreds of tons of stone, but also it seems he successfully went unnoticed by the entire surrounding population during this entire procedure. Just who could have built Gilmerton Cove? When was it built? Why did they build it? With modern radar scans of the surrounding area indicating that even more systems lay close by, still undiscovered, possibly isolated by ancient cave-ins, you have to wonder, could the Gilmerton Cove be far older and originally far grander and extensively larger than anyone today could have ever possibly imagined? Will we ever solve the mystery of Gilmerton Cove? It seems only time will tell. If we could prove beyond doubt that our continued posit of an ancient, once highly advanced yet pre-Ice Age civilization once existing here on our planet, we would literally have to rewrite our understandings of antiquity. We have covered numerous sites, found submerged all around the world, Yet, unfortunately, due to their proximity to islands and the continental regions they are found amongst, many are dismissed as merely being 5 to 10,000 year old ruins, 
fitting with modern paradigm, and alas, avoiding controversy or the questions which inevitably follow. Yet our next side of interest may turn out to not only be that most important of submerged ruins ever found on Earth, but the smoking gun previously mentioned. On the 19th of May 2001, India's Union Minister for the Science and Technology Division, Murli Manohar Joshi, announced that the ruins of an ancient civilization had been discovered off the coast of Gujarat, in the Gulf of Kambahat. The site was discovered by INOT, National Institute for Ocean Technology. Using sonar, the discovered ruin is now being strongly argued as definitively pre-Ice Age, yet also advanced in nature. NIOT went on to describe an area of regularly spaced artificial structures. Located 20 kilometers from the Gujarat coast and spans 9 kilometers, Joshi claims the site as an urban settlement that predates the Indus Valley Civilization. Further descriptions of the site by Joshi describe it as containing regularly spaced dwellings, a granary, a bath, a citadel, and a drainage system. According to Wiki, Quote, the structures and artifacts discovered by NIOT are the subject of contention. The major disputes surrounding the Gulf of Combat cultural complex are claims about the existence of submerged city-like structures, the difficulty associating dated artifacts with the site itself, and disputes about whether stone artifacts recovered at the site are actually geofacts or artifacts. One major complaint is that artifacts at the site were recovered by dredging, instead of being recovered during a controlled archaeological excavation." End quote. Simply put, due to the fact that it has not been excavated properly, and we predict probably never will, academia are dismissing this ancient city as simply unconfirmed. We feel a quite ridiculous position to take despite NIOT's supporting data of its existence due to its accidental discovery, presumably via dredging. We find the marine archaeology in the Gulf of Kambat highly compelling. Gold. Sought after and killed for since the beginning of time. It has held a unique place within the human psyche for countless millennia. Never rusting or tarnishing, precious ancient golden artifacts, often left with the dead, are discovered many centuries, sometimes millennia later, still glistening like the day they were left. Perhaps one of the more peculiar, visually impressive, yet suspiciously little-known ancient golden artifact has to be the Berlin Golden Hat. And although, predictably, a rather mundane modern history has been attached to it. We believe there is substantial evidence to suggest it is in fact an upart, an out-of-place artifact. Supposedly, according to the academics, it is a late Bronze Age artifact, somehow made during this era, from incredibly thin gold leaf. It now resides within the Noise Museum on Museum Island, Berlin, in a room all by itself within an elaborate maximum security display case. One has to wonder, with such excessive security, could this hat perhaps be more historically valuable than we are being led to believe? The Bronze Age was so named because of the technological ability to work with particular metals, bronze being that metal, hence the name of the age. The question is, how did a developing Bronze Age people create such a delicately constructed, elaborately decorated item so accurately out of gold leaf? The Berlin hat is the best preserved specimen among four others, also predictably dated to the Bronze Age of Central Europe. Two were found in southern Germany, and one in the west of France, all located within the 19th and 20th centuries. It is academically assumed that the hat served as the insignia of deities or priests within the context of a sun cult, a studied area of historical cultural society widespread throughout Central Europe at the time. It is at best a presumption based on many other presumptions. Interestingly, the hats also display complex astronomical and calendrical functions, 
More compelling evidence to suggest these hats are in fact items left by an advanced civilization, possibly reused by a later culture. The Berlin Gold Hat was put on sale in the international arts trade in 1995. In 1996, the Berlin Museum für Vor- and Frugestichte bought it as an important Bronze Age artifact. The seller claimed that the object came from an anonymous Swiss private collection, which had been assembled in the 1950s and 1960s. It assumed that the hat was found in southern Germany or Switzerland. The good preservation of the cone suggests that, like the Schifferstadt example, it must have been carefully filled with soil or ashes and then buried upright in relatively fine soil. An incredible possible upart. Modern Day Turkey – A Literal Treasure Trove of Surviving Relics of a Lost Antiquity Temples from a bygone era, seemingly prehistoric stone-cut monolithic academically supposed tombs, countless ancient ruins, not only built from incredibly large megalithic stones, but many said stones etched with a signature, which we have found at a number of sites now, dotting the entire globe. This all aligns with our own research's conclusions, suggesting they were, in fact, left by a now lost civilization, due to their concentrations focused around nearby anomalies and unexplainable features often found amongst the structures, that these unique blocks are found so often incorporated into sites impossible to explain, yet spanning most of the Earth. Yet regardless, Turkey is an excellent place for anyone to heavily research, in pursuit of fragments of evidence, overwhelmingly, undeniably, supporting our long-held postulation of lost yet once highly capable civilizations who once called these sites home. Although some stonework in the area can be acclaimed as cyclopic, Hattusa also possesses something more extraordinary – a mysterious green cube still in situ to this day. Its continued existence and seeming resistance to grave robbing and stone robbers, perhaps due to the many stories attached to the stone, all of which claim it possesses powerful energies, one of the reasons why it has fortunately remained where it was placed untold millennia ago. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguingly, is the possibility for our claim here on the channel that just like that of many other ruins all over Earth, not claimed by our most recent ancestors themselves, but due to this convenience, subsequently attributed to said group by modern archaeology as their work also, successfully concealing the site's true remarkable origins, especially our mysterious green stone. Rich agricultural lands once surrounded the ancient settlement, which we claim was itself built atop the remains of a now lost civilization, and their possible choice of location may have been driven by the stone itself, thus having predated said group's arrival, which according to modern archaeology and permitted timelines, dates from an inhabitation during the Bronze Age. Yet the purpose for the green stone, its past possible significance, and the seemingly still surviving wariness and reluctance of any immoral activities surrounding the stones continued life at the center, or proverbial center, or indeed foundation of this incredible site, left alone, still resting in its location, its mysterious supposed powers, documented since and many before its long recorded history within modern academic journals. Could the claims regarding the green stone be true? even attributed with miraculous healing capabilities? The inhabitants had an excellent supply of timber for building, fertile lands providing possibly millions of now lost ancestors who grew crops of wheat in massive quantities. They had a rich diet too, with barley, lentils, and many other remnants of fruit and vegetables that were successfully being harvested. Flax has also been found to have once been harvested. However, their primary source of cloth was sheep wool. They also hunted deer responsibly within their forests, but akin to Old England, may have been a luxury reserved for the land-owning nobility alone. It seems that the people who initially created the site, 
successfully build a functioning, architecturally, irrigationally, and horticulturally advanced settlement far out of the reach of our bronze-wielding ancestors, who, we feel, simply reignited into a functioning township. Yet it seems the other settlements have all but turned to dust. Were they simply neglected by our Bronze Age ancestors, perhaps? If so, supportive of our posit of the site's efficient layout, was not the work of the Bronze Age people exhibiting a layout and managing of land far beyond their capabilities. And these neighboring sites, possibly too dilapidated to try to repair, were simply left to slowly return to nature. Yet, the green stone, we feel, due to its location, along with the many past popular native accounts of strange goings-on surrounding its claimed energy, the possibility that the stone was once held in incredibly high regard, is a possible history for the green stone which we find highly compelling.